Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use live paint inside of Illustrator to achieve this effect. If this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So this is the file that I'm working with here. I've got the artwork prepared. I've got the word surf in here. I've got some vector lines that I've created to emulate a kind of a crest of a wave. What I would like to do is drop colors into the regions where those red lines overlap for the text. Now I say text, it isn't actually text anymore. You can't use editable text with the live paint tool feature inside of Illustrator. You have to convert text into an object. So. And as you can see here, I've got my uh, converted text turned into paths and I have the red lines, which um, I drew the red lines with the pen tool to create this kind of crest of a wave effect in here. And um, I don't want the red lines to still be present. So I just want them on screen here so you can see them nice and clearly so you can see what I've done. Um, but if I use my selection tool and just drag across those lines in there, it should select most of them. They're just if I hold down the shift key and shift and let's click on this one here. And now I have got all of my red lines selected. If I go to the window menu, go down the list to swatches. I've got my swatches in here, look very small, and the swatches panel will play quite a big part in terms of live paint buckets. So I'm going to go to the panel flight menu and choose large thumbnail and then just pull the width of this out in here so I can see these two groups nice and clearly. It's so a super wide panel. I'll then go to the, uh, the stroke icon click on that to make it active at the front and then remove the stroke from there. So you don't need any kind of print characteristics to these. You're going to add them afterwards. So now I've removed the red lines, which I don't want a part of the artwork. And then I'm going to click and drag across everything that I want to be a part of this live paint group, which really is just adding the, the converted text characters in here. Now you could go to the object menu and you could choose live paint and then choose make to turn this into a live paint group. It does actually group the artwork together. Kind of tedious. Um, so I, I tend to say is you can just ignore that menu option really for the most part. Um, if you tap the K key in the keyboard, you'll activate the live paint tool. So it is actually buried underneath the shape builder tools. If I click and hold down on here, you've got the live paint bucket and you've got the live paint selection tool, which you can literally use to select components in your live paint group. But with my elements selected, if I hover over and left click on the live paint bucket, all that you now have to do is hover your cursor over any part of the selected objects and you'll get this. Which little tooltip in here uh, of sorts tells us that if you click now, you'll turn the selected objects into a live paint group. And that's what I'll do. I'll left click in there like so. So that is now a live paint group. It won't make it really look any different in this mode in here. But notice now if I hover uh, my cursor, which now looks very different, you've now got a bucket icon. But the actual region where you utilize this tool from is the tiny black triangle just above the paint bucket. And then you have three boxes above it. Now, these are actually swatches from your swatches panel. I'll come to those in a second. But notice now, if I hover the triangular bit of my cursor over that region, you'll see that anywhere where the were original red lines intersect now have basic kind of visually sliced up the artwork. So I now have effectively paint by regions. Um, and then if you want to start using a color inside of Illustrator to paint with, well, then I would say you go straight to the swatches panel. Again, you'll notice that I've got some colors prepared here and I'm going to start off with um, a nice light blue in here. So I'll left click on light blue. Notice what happens. This now shows me where my cursor is. The middle square is the active color. The square to the left is the previous color in the swatches panel and the square to the right hand side is the next color. And you can literally use the cursor keys, the left cursor key. And if I tap that, it takes you to a different color and notice the link between the two. If I move my cursor here closer to the swatches panel, as I tap the right cursor key on the keyboard, notice that it cycles through the different swatches in the swatches panel. So that's the neat way of being able to work with this. You, you in theory, don't actually need the swatches panel open once you start with this. But as I say, it can be quite handy to have it open on screen. So I'm going to start off if I just tap back to left to a very light blue in here and then I can hover my cursor over the path and then left click and it fills in that region with that color all the way up to the edge of the path. And then when it meets the first intersecting line, it stops filling it. So I can do that for all these regions across the top in here. I want these all to be this light blue color to kind of match a, 
really kind of a daytime kind of light blue sky and then the this one as well. So you just got to watch out for where these regions crisscross over, make sure you've grabbed them all in there and fill them with color. And then I want to go and now add in colors for my wave. So I'm going to go to the darker blue colors in here. So I'm going to pick up this dark blue and then, um, oh, notice that I missed this bit here. Look out for that one. So if I tap back a couple of times to the right hand side, click in there, that also needs to be the light blue because it's above that line. And then use my cursor key to tap to the left hand side to go to a darker blue left click in there and then just drop it in up to this region here and to get the darker blue in there like so you can always go back and you can pick a different color if you want if i want to go for a, a darker blue you can just use the cursor keys or you can click to a color inside of here and you, then you can start using it so if i wanted to go for a darker blue i could click in that region and just recolor it you know it's not a one-time only thing you can literally just drop colors into those intersecting regions at any time that you want so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, speed up the video a little bit. So you'd have to sit here and listen to me waffle on about color and things anymore because I'm sure you don't want to do that. Um, and I'll speed it up just to the point where I've filled in all these colors in here to show you a couple of extra things you might want to be aware of as well. Okay, so we have um, our word surf now filled in with the different kind of intersecting colors in there. So I've got that kind of effect of the crest of the wave running through the word, which will be so much more difficult to do and edit in different ways inside of Illustrator. You have to create things like a clipping mask and things like that. Um, but also to show you, it's not only solid colors that you can utilize for the fill, you can also utilize um, patterns as well. So I've got some ready prepared patterns here. If I wanted to, I could click on this kind of wavy colors one here. I mean, I think I'm right in saying that all of these patterns have um, are from libraries inside of Illustrator. So if I go down to the library icon down here, you've got patterns You've got basic graphics in there. You've got decorative nature. You will be able to access the same kinds of um, patterns from there as well. So without further ado, now having clicked on this one, if I wanted to, I could go through and I could add a pattern in here, just like so, just to make it, you know, maybe a little bit more visually interesting if you wanted to. So patterns work as well. Same philosophy. If you tap the left cursor key, you can cycle to the previous swatches in the swatches panel. Tap the right cursor key to, to tap to the right hand side to look at the next swatches. So there it is, folks. I mean, that's how you can add fills inside of regions inside of Illustrator. One other thing to mention, we've only looked at fills. You can also apply strokes. So if I say so if I hover over my F in here and I add a dark color to that, if I left click on it to add a dark color, you can hold down the shift key and that will change the mode from fill to stroke. And now you see not a paint bucket, but a paintbrush. So again, what you could do is you could go to the window menu, go down to uh, stroke, open up the stroke panel. So seven points in there for the stroke point weight. If I hold down the shift key again, hover over there and left click, that's how you can change it. So even though the whole live paint group is active, it won't change the properties for all of them in there. Notice now I can go back and target the stroke in there. I could go back to one of the uh, lighter blue colors, hover over, hold down the shift key, shift and left click to change the property of that. If I don't like the thickness of the stroke, I can reduce it. Again, same thing. I can hover my cursor over the edge of the path, hold down the shift key and shift and left click and change the thickness of it in there. So it may well be that if you wanted to change the color of strokes, you need the stroke panel open and the swatches panel as well. Um, I'm going to remove that from here. So I'm going to click on the non swatch and then hold down the shift key and shift and left click on there like so switch back to my selection tool click away and then close these panels down final thing to show you then if i select this path in here and then pick up my zoom tool if i wanted to i could zoom over to where the s is down here and you can change the position of where these lines crisscross as well so if i switch to my direct selection tool click on the end of the stroke in there notice that i can click and drag and i can pull that down you can alter the region that the color increases or decreases where it affects. As long as you don't pull these lines apart. So notice here, I haven't moved this path to the right hand side. I haven't moved it above the S in here, but if you were to, it just loses the color in that region. If I click and drag and pull this upwards and then let go of the mouse, it now fills it complete with the darker blue and you've lost that region because it no longer intersects. If I click and hold down the mouse, and drag that anchor point back down again, you get the appearance of the line higher up. So it will just try and guess what you need to do. 
but just be aware yes you can change the path though they intersect you can modify the anchor points and so on and so forth but just make sure that if you do have a region of color don't pull those two apart because you'll drop the color out of those regions so that's it folks that's how you can live paint inside of illustrator by creating multiple shapes putting them into a live paint group and where those shapes crisscross one another they create regions where you can drop color into as always if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up folks you can subscribe to the channel and until next time farewell